two. Uh, may we have a roll call, please? Mr. Fuller? Yes, here. Mr. Coleman? Here. Ms. McCarthy? Here. Mr. McCarthy? Here. Mr. McCarthy? Mr. Smith? Here. Mr. Van Dusen? Here. Mr. Weber? Here. Mr. Abel, please stand and join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Yes, I believe everyone has received a copy of these meeting minutes. I haven't heard anybody with any uh, complaints from that, so I will uh, pass these each individually. <coughs> Excuse me. I would like to make a motion to approve the meeting minutes of the special Perrysburg City Council meeting held on January 18, 2022, as written. Dispense with the readings. Second. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Fuller. Yes. Mr. Coleman. Yes. Mr. Attorney. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Van Usen. Yes. Mr. Weber. Yes. All right, and then I would also like to move to approve the meeting minutes of the City Council meeting held on January 18, 2022, as remnant dispense with their reading. Second. Roll call. Mr. Fuller? Yes. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Ms. Materni? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Van Usen? Yes. Mr. Weber? Yes. Okay, we have no special reports, letters, communication, and citizen concerns. You guys wanted to come up and say a little bit? Um, this is the time. Okay. Do it. <laughs> Guess I should have made that a little clearer. But yes. Please say your name and what the business is and all that. My name is Jordan Stahl. I am the marketing marketing manager for Capital Inc. And we are celebrating our 40th anniversary on February 4th. Um, it was started by Jeff Hammonds. I don't know if Jeff, you want to come up and say a few words? Uh, just thank you for this uh, acknowledgement. It's been a, a fast 40. I hope I see 50. But um, it's been a, a great community to grow a business in. It's been a great community to raise a family in. Um, it's been a great school system to have kids educated in. And I just say thank you guys for what you do. You step up. You're making a difference to keep Perrysburg strong. You're building a great community for businesses like mine to be successful. And it's... Uh, we got a lot of people that came tonight, and uh, the support system in this community is awesome. I'd like to thank Joni. She's been my business partner through this whole thing. And Matt Zuccarell, who's filming, he's uh, been with me for 26 years, so a great acknowledgement there. And uh, Kevin, who's a software engineer, um, you know, we do some amazing things here. Steve worked at Computol. He's now a, a pretty heavy guy at Microsoft. and working in the big league, so he graduated to the majors. So we feel good about a lot of the things we've been able to build and do, and thank you guys for allowing it to happen here in Perrysburg. Why don't you, it isn't the chamber or the rotary, but why don't you say a little bit about what your company does? Oh, well, thank you for the opportunity. Um, Computol exists for the sole purpose of helping companies integrate IT. We deliver tech and talent to make a difference uh, for businesses who need uh, specialty services that perhaps wouldn't afford to have all the things that they would need. Um, we have a team of 16 professional people uh, working out of 118 East 3rd Street, and we do software engineering, software and web development. Um, we have a strong cybersecurity practices. Uh, we help companies have strong security and develop initiatives to be compliant with certain industry standards. And most specifically, we help companies network people together so they can get work done. So, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, okay, we'll go to administrative reports. Um, we have, all right, did the proclamation. Uh, the only other report we'd have is uh, I want to let everybody know and uh, also recognize uh, the city staff, particularly the uh, street division has been working hard at getting ready for uh, what might likely happen in the next day or two. So uh, they've been working hard. We have plans in place to address it that we also ask residents, we know it's gonna be a lot of snow, uh, be safe, stay off the roads. If you don't have to be on the roads, um, please stay off them. That makes it easier for the snow plows and the crews to be out there doing what they need to do so that uh, we can get back going and operational as a community as soon as possible. 
Uh, city offices on Thursday and Friday uh, are likely to be closed if, if the snow gets to a certain level. So uh, we, we want to encourage people to be safe and to not be out and about. So I also want to thank all the administrative staff as, uh, in preparation. There's been a lot of hard work already put in and hopefully that comes, uh, we're ready to handle and uh, tackle the problem that we're gonna have. So uh, the end of my report, city administration. Um, I just wanna reiterate that we have been working on that the last day and a half, and we do have plans in place for the department and division to either be on site to tackle the job or work remotely. We do have literally a handful of people whose job uh, does not allow them to work remotely, uh, so they will also not be in the building. But we think it's safer to have them not report to work than to be on the road and possibly get stuck and cause our emergency responders to have to respond uh, to their rescue and their safety as opposed to the general public. So we are very prepared and we feel very confident with the plan in place. Thank you. Uh, finance director? I have no report. Continues. <laughs> uh, law director? I just wanted to say thank you for budgeting a law intern. I'm introducing all of you. This is Thomas Dillon. He's the legal intern for this semester. And he's doing a great job. He drafted one of your resolutions for today. <coughs> all right. Uh, President Council report. Thank you, Mayor. I don't have a report, but just a, a question and an update. I know uh, with the recent legislation uh, regarding the ability to have a second DORA, I'm curious to see uh, where things stand with the possibility of introducing a DORA over in the Levis Commons area. Uh, the, when the legislation changed to allow the city to have a second DORA, we immediately reached out to um, Levis Commons and spoke with them. And I'll let uh, Bridget answer. I think we're kind of waiting for the legislation to take effect. And then to ask them. Yes, we have met with Levis Commons uh, management staff. They are actually in the process of updating their application uh, from their original application to make sure that it's still in compliance with all the rules and regs at the state level. And they are prepared to deliver that application to the mayor's office on the date that the legislation becomes effective. And then the mayor and his staff will do the review that we did last time and provide um, the mayor with a, a recommendation uh, with either pros and cons of it or just the, the positives to it and then he will make the decision on whether to forward it to city council. Okay, thank you, because I know that's something that uh, I believe we've had a few residents who would love to see that over there, and if there's anything we can do to expedite that. I think it's March 23rd is the date that that becomes active. The 23rd or 26th sticks in my mind. Yeah. But they have been working on it. Okay, and uh, I just would love to see something of that nature proposed so we can have a conversation here in council. We anticipate that. And that would be the end of anything I have to say today. Well, until my next section. <laughs> Your committee report? Yes. Um, all right. Or, uh, finance and economic development. Thank you, Your Honor. I have no report, but I, tonight I will be introducing legislation for the amended budget. Tonight will be the first reading. I know not all the committees have had a chance to uh, discuss all the, the, the changes yet and proposals, but. Uh, but uh, if we do all three readings, we will probably be, be voting on this on March 1st. Or if everyone's comfortable by the, uh, uh, after the second reading, uh, if there's, maybe we can, you know, get that vote there. But uh, we'll see how everyone, everyone gets a chance to get all their questions answered. But so tonight I'll, I'll introduce the first reading. And I would like to introduce Ordinance 8-22 and move that its rules be suspended to allow for its reading by number and title only. Second. Roll call. Mr. Fuller? Yes. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Ms. Materni? Yes. Mr. McCarthy? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Van Heusen? Yes. Mr. Weber? Yes. Ordinance 8, 2022. Amended Ordinance 54, 2021. Previously amended by Ordinance 4, 2022. To amend appropriations for current expenses and other expenditures for the year ending December 31st, 2022. And declaring an emergency. If there is any discussion, I suppose we have an hour later, but I, I, my, I've had my questions answered today. I would just add, uh, if anyone has any questions, um, happy to answer them. Please get them, direct them to uh, Bridget, Amber, or myself, and we'll be happy to answer any concerns. Or if you want to talk about it in the committee, which is what this is designed to do, uh, I'll give you that time. Uh, we're happy to answer any questions. All right. Well, the next meeting of uh, finance and economic development is uh, scheduled for 
Tuesday, February 8th at 5.30 p.m. Uh, end of my report. Thank you very much. Uh, safety. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the safety committee meeting was Tuesday, February 25th at 6 p.m. Members present was Barry Van Huzen, Mark Weber, and Jan McCurney. Also present were Kate Sandrado, Law Director Patrick Jones, Chief Christopher, Christopher Sargent, Lieutenant, Henry Ruiz, Fire Chief, and Tom Donato, Deputy Fire Chief. The approval of minutes from January 8th were, were passed without objection. Taser purchase for the police division. Chief Jones is requesting that legislation be submitted to the State Committee to allow for the purchase of 43 Taser 7s and the necessary accessories to the Perrysburg Police Division, a total cost of $141,152.75. Purchase price includes a Caesar 7 for each sworn officer, two spare Caesar 7s, a docking station, software licenses for each Caesar 7 user, training items, a five-year warranty on all hardware, and training and duty cartridges for five years. Chief Jones is requesting that this be approved as an emergency measure due to supply chain issues and lead times. The committee agreed 3 0 to send the council for approval. Pro Phoenix Agreement. Chief Jones is requesting the legislation be submitted by the Safety Committee to allow for the renewal of the Pro Phoenix Maintenance Agreement. This agreement is necessary to maintain the Police Division's records management system, computer aided dispatch software and the mobile terminal software. He is requesting that the three readings be waived to ensure that there is uninterrupt, uninterrupted service. We need to be P0 to send City Council for approval. Radio maintenance for the police division. Chief Jones is requesting to allow for the renewal of a radio maintenance agreement with PNR Communications. This agreement is necessary to maintain the police division's radio system which includes the dispatch, console positions, radio control room, hardware, and all mobile and portable radio, radios for the Razor Police Division. Mrs. Weber asked, wanted to know that Chief Jones is happy with the system. The answer is that it is more than paid off and the communications is seamless. The annual cost is slightly higher than this year as they have added some additional radios. We have agreed 3 0 to send this to council for approval. Purchase of two unmarked vehicles for the police division, and these will come from the, form, the forfeiture fund. Chief Jones is requesting to allow for the purchase of two unmarked vehicles for the Perrysburg Police Division with funds from the federal shared proceeds equipment. He is requesting to purchase two 2022 Ford Police Interceptor Utility Hybrid Vehicles a cost of $37,959.35 each to the Montrose, to Montrose Ford in Akron, Ohio. These are made to look more like a customer, a consumer grade vehicle. The main agreed to be zero to send this to council for approval. Purchase of four marked vehicles for the police division. These will come from the general fund. Chief Jones is requesting to purchase four 2022 Ford Police Interceptor utility hybrid vehicles at a cost of $37,876.14 each. These new vehicles would replace the 2004 Ford van that was repurposed to the Department of Public Service. The 2012 Ford van that was transferred to the Fraysburg Municipal Court a 2014 Chevy Tahoe and a 2015 Chevy Tahoe. Chief Jones is also requesting the necessary equipment and installation services through PNR Communications in Oregon, Ohio, to upfit these four new vehicles. I, I wanted to I asked and wanted to know how many vehicles the police division has had as total on the road. Chief Jones stated that they have a total of 23 total vehicles currently. Committee agreed to be zero to send both of these into City Council for approval. Purchase of one vehicle for the fire division. Chief Ruiz is requesting the purchase of one 2022 Ford Police Interceptor vehicle 
at a cost of $37,959.35 through Montrose Ford. This new vehicle will replace a 2008 Ford Crown Victoria fire utility vehicle, which will become a which will become a utility vehicle. The current utility vehicle is a 2003 Crown Victoria and does not handle well with snow or icy conditions. The style will be the same as the unmarked vehicles for the police division, just a different color. The committee agreed to be zero to send this to council for approval. Conversation regarding how to move forward with the downtown Dora and the potential expansion. I indicated that the potential expansion would, as proposed, would be from Elm to Walnut Street and South to Fifth Street. I believe that we need to have a more, more formal presentation since some, everyone seems to have some of the same questions about the potential expansion. There was much more discussion between committee members, Ms. Sandredo and Chief Jones. Ms. Attorney wanted to know the reason for including the Commodore Browns potentially, and Chief Jones responded that events like music at the market or the car shows make it difficult at times to enforce the dual boundaries. Ms. Wilbur wanted to know about the potential also of extending it to her department. Proposed budget, um, American Recovery Fund discussion, I think it's American Recovery. We are, we are Chief Jones stated that the idea is for the design phase to hopefully be done this year for the second floor of the police division. Chief Ruiz stated that on his part of the stated that on his part of the amended project, contracts are finalized, as they are not finished, they have not finished them at the time of the original submission. And that was after the inquiry about the fire division and the amended budget. There being no other business, we adjourn to 647. So there are seven resolutions, six of which have been asked to be passed as an emergency measure. Would there be an objection to put the six of those together, or would you like them all ready right separately? Okay. Very good. So if I can do this without keeping them all. So I would like to introduce resolution three, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, and move that the rules be suspended to allow for its reading by number and title only to be dispensed with the second and third reading. I said <laughs> roll call. Mr. Fuller? Yes. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Ms. McCartney? Yes. Mr. McCarthy? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Van Hoosen? Yes. Mr. Weber? Yes. Resolution 3, 2022, a resolution authorizing purchase agreement with Axon Enterprises Inc. for the purchase of 43 new tasers for the police division and amount not to exceed $141,452.75 and declaring an emergency. Resolution 5, 2022, a resolution authorizing a radio maintenance agreement with PNR Communication Services Inc for radio repairs and maintenance for the police division and an amount not to exceed $25,987.08 and declaring an emergency. Resolution 6, 2022, a resolution authorizing the purchase agreement with Montrose Ford and an amount not to exceed $75,918.70 for the purchase of two 2022 Ford Police Interceptor Utility Hybrid Vehicles for the Perrysburg Police Division and declaring an emergency. Resolution 7, 2022, a resolution authorizing a purchase agreement with Montrose Ford in an amount not to exceed $151,504.56 for the purchase of four 2022 Ford Police Interceptor Utility Hybrid Vehicles for the Perrysburg Police Division and declaring an emergency. Resolution 8, 2022, a resolution authorizing a purchase agreement with PNR Communications in an amount not to exceed $65,751.64 for the purchase and installation of vehicle equipment for the police division and declaring an emergency. Resolution 9, 2022, a resolution authorizing a purchase agreement with Montrose Ford, Akron, and an amount not to exceed $37,959.35 for the purchase of one 2022 Ford Police Interceptor Utility Hybrid Vehicle for the Perrysburg Fire Division and declaring an emergency. I move that resolution three, five, 
6, 7, 8, and 9, 2022, be passed as emergency measures. Second. Discussion. Uh, I had a couple questions. I can address the chief. Since he's here, we might as well give him a chance to talk. <coughs> um, do we have any unmarked vehicles that the president, the president is in town? We do. We do? Okay. Yes. And how do you use those? No, the, the unmarked vehicles are used for administrative staff because we don't always necessarily need a fully marked vehicle with the extra cage and that in it. And then for our detectives, we use unmarked vehicles for that as well. And then these are all being purchased from a dealer in Akron. I'm kind of assuming we try and find, I mean, heck, we got three auto dealers here in the city. Yeah, so um, Montrose and Akron got the state bid price this year. Um, so we we're, we're purchasing on state bid. The last two years, we've been able to purchase from Ball and Ford. It matched the state price, and uh, I've actually beaten it. And I asked for quotes from them again, um, and I told them I needed it by the 14th so I could have the safety committee. And they sent me the quote last Friday after safety committee. So um, they lost out on it. Okay. Sure. We, we tried. To, yes. We tried to buy local, but couldn't. Right. And then my other question was this. A total of six vehicles. I mean, I'm going to go for it. I trust you guys do over there. That seems like a lot compared to prior years. This, this is more, yeah. So we had the uh, money, we had a federal forfeiture money uh, that, that came in at the end of uh, last year. And that money can't be used to supplant um, general fund money. So we decided we could use it to replace some of our older unmarked vehicles. And then typically I've been buying three cars a year, um, but as you're aware in this year's budget, um, there's approval of three additional officers. Well, with three additional officers, we're going to need an additional car as well. So we put that fourth car in there this year in the general fund. Mm -hmm. Chief, didn't you say that you're you're getting close to getting them all replaced, or how many more did you have to go? We're, we're probably have about two more years to, to yeah. cycle out the old Four tires years and, get, and get the hybrids in place. Okay. Uh, just to build off what Tim asked, the same question I asked about the unmarked vehicles. Do you use those for patrol anytime? Uh, if we use them for patrol, we don't use them for patrol when we're doing traffic enforcement. Okay. That, but we may use them as a you know a vehicle that's in the background is watching observation. Okay. Um, and then uh, just I, I didn't see it in the minute. Are we just uh, the tasers that we're we're looking at? Are we just in a cycle? To, it's time to get new ones. Yeah. yeah. So the, the tasers we have and. Um, this is a, a picture that I had given the safety committee. So the, the top picture there is the X26P that we have. It looks similar to a handgun. The bottom one are the Taser 7s, which are bright yellow. Um, less confusion on, on what it is. Um, but the, yeah, the 26Ps we've had uh, for a number of years now. Um, we have issues with them. And so we decided, decided to upgrade to the Taser 7, which has been out for a couple years now. Okay. And then... I assume I'm just going to ask a couple questions about the taser. Do they feel differently in the, the, the hand than the traditional handgun would? For me, they do. Um, and is how we carry them. The officers when we carry them, uh, we carry them on the opposite side, so it's a cross draw when you're, when you're getting the tasers out. Um, but there's still a, it's still a pistol grip, but it's definitely different. Okay. And then, do our officers? Um, is part of their training, do they get hit by these tasers? No, that, that's optional. Okay. Um, taser, um, it's actually taser's recommendation that leave it as an option. We have our instructors have all been hit with a taser. Um, I've opted not to. <laughs> that's what uh, and I, I appreciate, I understand why you would choose not to. I just, I, I was curious yeah. if that was part of our training. No, but training, we do, do go through taser training every year. Okay. And with the, the new tasers, we'll actually dedicate a little extra time this year to the, that training. Okay. That, that's all the questions. When, when I took the Citizens Police Academy, our instructor volunteered for it, so we all got to witness that, and that was, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> and I would just add that, and then you talked about this at the end of the picture, the chief just showed us that there's a distinct difference between the old and the new, just from yellow to black. Yep. And then secondly, I think each officer will have their own taser Right now they're being shared. Right, so we, share the, we share the tasers right now, we don't have enough. So with these uh, policy 
connect kind of model at um, all some other agencies, but they'll dock those tasers every 30 days and then that actually downloads the data off those tasers. So, you know, we'll know if the taser was used and not reported to us or if they had a mis discharge into the floor like I did several years ago yeah. with it, we'll know if it doesn't get reported. Okay. Well, I first thank you for the, the uh, flyer, I guess is the word I'll, I'll use that you put together explaining exactly what you're asking for and how it's used and what, what kind of warranties. You clearly did your homework and I appreciate you investing time in non-lethal um, uh, options as well. I appreciate everyone's question because you answered all the questions. Oh, okay. question that was asked. Any other questions uh, for the chief? Always thank you very much, chief. Uh, roll call. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Ms. Materney? I'm sorry, yes. Mr. McCarthy? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Van Husen? Yes. Mr. Weber? Yes. Mr. Fold? Yes. I would like to introduce resolution 4, 2022, and move that the rules be suspended to allow for its reading by number entitled only to dispense with the second and third readings. Uh, I second. Roll call. Mr. Fuller? Yes. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Ms. Matoni? Yes. Mr. McCarthy? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Van Husen? Yes. Mr. Weber? Yes. Resolution 4, 2022, a resolution authorizing renewal of agreement with ProPhoenix in an amount not to exceed $34,273.28 to provide maintenance and technical support for Police Division computer systems for the year beginning March 21st, 2022. I move that resolution 4, 2022 be passed. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Ms. Materney? Yes. Mr. McCarthy? Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Van Hoosen? Yes. Mr. Weber? Yes. Mr. Fuller? <laughs> Mr. Coleman? Yes. So, the safety committee next meeting will be on February 22nd at 6 p.m. Recreation. Thank you, Mayor. I have no report. Our next scheduled meeting is going to be on February 8th of 2022 at 6.30 p.m. Thank you. Planning zoning? I always prefer Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's, it helps with my parenting schedule. Okay. Um, um, this is next Thursday? Yeah. That would be fine. Okay. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, why don't we then set it for that Thursday? I don't know what the date is. Okay. The 10th? 10th. Okay, Thursday, February 10th, 530. Sounds good to me. I'm sure you passed that work that belong to Brody. Yes. Yep. <laughs> One little thing. Sneak up on me. Um, I'd like to introduce Ordinance 9-2022 rules for the systemic cooperation with the number of pilot owners and the expense for the second and third reading. Second. Roll call. Mr. Fuller? Yes. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Ms. Materney? Yes. Mr. McCarthy? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Van Hoosen? Yes. Mr. Weber? Yes. Ordinance 9 2022 amending the zoning map of the city of Perrysburg, which from Ohio to rezone parcel 261400300000013000 from OS to C4. Yeah, all the zeros? Yep. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. McCarthy? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Van Hoosen? Yes. Mr. Weber? Yes. Mr. Fuller? Yes. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Ms. Materney? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Uh, personnel? Okay, I do have a report for you tonight. Uh, we met on January 25th. I called the meeting to order at 5.08. Uh, present were myself, uh, Kevin Fuller, and Tim McCarthy. Also present were Kate Sandretto, Kelly Chavant, and Brian Thomas, the city engineer. Uh, we approved the prior month's minutes. Uh, 
uh, Kevin Fuller abstained, and then uh, Mark was in the crowd, so he, he assured us that he didn't see any inconsistencies as well. Uh, then we reviewed and approved job descriptions for staff engineer and HR coordinator. Uh, Ms. Chalfant presented the job descriptions for staff engineer and HR coordinator. The staff engineer will, under general direction, supervise seasonal personnel, review plans for public improvements, monitor field progress of construction, represent the city at meetings when directed and coordinate work of various technical consultants. Mr. Fuller was curious if this uh, position was accounted for in the budget, which it was. Mr. Thomas wanted to keep the job description more big picture and leave it open to see who applies and will tailor it uh, uh, based on their experience. He is hoping to do more designs in-house to save uh, some money for the city. Ms. Chalfant stated that the prior engineer was a project manager, not an engineer, and we outsourced everything before. The committee approved this job description 3-0. Three did not, uh, three zero. Uh, The human resources coordinator supports the daily operation of the HR office, including the facilitation of employee rec recruitment, onboarding, and exit processing, outside agency pre-hire activities, medical and dental benefit plan administration, workers' compensation claim review and tracking, electronic employee document management, and annual HR projects. Elaine Bishop, Ms. Chalfant's administrative, assistance, uh, administrative assistant, has taken on this role, so it's not an additional position. Uh, the committee approved this job description 3-0. Uh, restructuring of the law department, I stated that there had been some activity on this, uh, but there, uh, we are still waiting on outside counsel's opinion on the matter. Other business, Mr. Coleman stated that uh, he had an email from Council President Jonathan Smith in regards to passing legislation for all non-bargaining employee, employees' raises to come to personnel committee on an annual basis. Mr. Coleman would like to get in the habit of looking at wages and being on top of paying our employees fairly and competitively. I uh, would like to uh, look at some legislation for this at the next personnel committee. I believe, and I'll just add this to the report, that has since been addressed by our law director. Thank you for getting that. Uh, getting that to us. I know we've handled a lot in personnel in the last year. Um, I don't know how I didn't recall that. So we slipped that into the pay band yeah. legislation. You request, you're all very consistent. You requested this when we were doing pay band, and so we put it at the end of the pay band so that it was consistent with what we were doing in the pay band. So that it was required not for approval, but that personnel see the raises every year. Yep. Or reduction. There's reduction. Perfect. 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 So uh, that has been addressed. Thank you for getting that uh, to all of us timely. Uh, there was no further business. We adjourned at 524. Uh, next meeting is going to be February 26, uh, 22nd at 5 p.m. Uh, nothing further. Thank you. Uh, public Utilities. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, public Utilities Committee Report. The uh, meeting was called to order at 6.31 p.m. By myself, Kevin Fuller. Committee members are present. Myself, Jan Attorney, and Jonathan Smith. Also present were Kate Sandretta, Law Director, Alice Godsey, Director of Public Utilities, and Matt Choma, Director of Public Utilities, or Deputy Director, excuse me. There were no citizens' concerns. Uh, the approval of prior month's mean, uh, minutes were read. There being no objections, the minutes were approved to nothing with myself abstaining. Uh, the sewer credits tabulation, Ms. Godsey explained to the committee members that for the calendar year 2021, there were a total of 32 credits <clears throat> under $1,000 each, that they were granted at an average of $217. For the month of January 2022, there is one sewer credit for an outside spigot leak. Mr. Smith was curious what the WPBUSP acronym stood for. Ms. Godsey stated that it stands for Water Power Backup Sump Pump. WL stands for water line. Water and sewer miscellaneous fees, Ms. Andretto explained that with the current fees associated with fixing and installing meters that the city is currently losing money because the product costs are rising, as well as the employees pay. She said that because of this, we need to consider raising the fees of these items. We are not looking to make money on this. We just do not want to lose money any longer. Mr. Smith wanted to know about the higher fees for outside versus inside water changes. Ms. Andretto explained that citizens inside the city are contributing to the income tax base, which means this could be an incentive for those outside the city to annex. Ms. Godsey explained that the additional charge goes into the reserve fund and helps inside city residents. I stated that I would like to see some comparison of inside and outside from local neighboring communities that are in the same situation. 
and would also like to see this reviewed annually. Regarding the sanitary sewer and oversizing agreement, uh, this resolution authorizes an agreement with Coventry Glen LLC for the construction of oversized sewer infrastructure in conjunction with real estate development of Coventry Point Plat 2. The agreement has been drafted and consistent with the city's sanitary sewer master plan and the sewer infrastructure cost recovery document. The difference in the cost due to oversizing is reimbursed to the developer pursuant to the terms of the cost sharing agreement. I, I was curious why an emergency measure for this wasn't appropriate. Ms. Sandretto is asking for it to be an emergency because we have to reimburse the developer who upfronted the money. The committee agreed three to zero to send this on to city council for approval. Uh, there being no other business, the meeting was adjourned at 7.04 p.m. I submit this for your approval. And uh, next meeting will be called Wednesday, February 23rd at 2022, 6.30 p.m. I have a real quick just recap on that. I, I just want to make sure I understand that, uh, that plan we do with the sewer uh, payback, I, I guess it would be. It, yeah, it, it's so they install more than the required and we help fund that cost because it ultimately goes to it. Yeah. But because we want to make sure that the downstream can be served, we need it to be upsized. So instead of running a parallel pipe, we work with the developer and they, they right size the pipe for us and we pay the difference between what they're required to install and what the pipe we're asking for. Perfect. I, I thought that was expect me to ask the same thing next time this comes up. And I, I think it's once a year. It actually but, saves us a lot of money right. because we would have to go through and tear the road, brand new roads up. Perfect. I, I thank you for the clarification. Uh, I'd like to introduce resolution 10-2022. Uh, a second. I'm sorry. Roll call. Mr. Fuller. Yes. Mr. Coleman. Yes. Ms. Materney. Yes. Mr. McCarthy. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Van Hoosen. Yes. Mr. Weber. Yes. Resolution 10, 2022, a resolution authorized an agreement with Carpentry LLC to construct oversized sanitary sewer infrastructure at the proposed Coventry Glen Flat 2 and declaring an emergency. I'm oh, sorry. Oh. Uh, I would like to introduce oh, next, next, I'm sorry. Next line down. Oh, here? Yeah. I move that. I move that, uh, excuse me. Format. Resolution 10-2022. We pass as an emergency measure. Second. Discussion? They all did the same thing. I, I apologize. I said I asked that during discussion. No, no, no. no, no Everybody struggled reading their first. Yeah. Nobody's, you, you catch on after a couple. Nobody's throwing any stones because you know, I have been there and didn't done that. Uh, uh, roll call. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Van Hoosen. Yes. Mr. Weber. Yes. Mr. Fuller. Yes. Mr. Coleman. Yes. Ms. Materney. Yes. Mr. McCarthy. Yes. And mine wasn't unanimous, so you're way ahead of me. <laughs> And I'll go ahead and just add that I think uh, we'll all forget about this within the next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, service committee? Uh, service committee was called to order at 5.30 by Chairperson Jan Attorney. Committee members present were Jan Attorney, Ken Fuller, and Mark Weber. Also present was Kate Sandretto, Law Director, and Brian Thomas, and City Engineer. No citizen, citizen concerns. Uh, there being no objections, minutes on November 29th, 2021, meeting were approved to zero. Mr. Fuller abstain. Orleans Park Bid Award. This resolution awarded the bid for the Orleans Park Park parking lot to get us paving and excavation ink in the amount of uh, 168 million seven hundred forty nine dollars and seventy three cents. Did I get that? I know I got that wrong. So. Thank you. I padded the bill a little bit by accident. Um, Ms. Sandretto is requesting City Council award the bid to get us paving and excavating ink and include a contingency amount as, uh, and excess of the bid amount to permit change orders to be authorized in the field, which is approximately 10% of the bid submission. Mr. Weber wanted to know about any significant changes, and Mr. Thomas explained that the landscape items, items will be added. There will be 50 parking spots with two handicapped spots, which is required by the number of parking lots that we will have. All the landscaping will be done by the service department. 
Committee agreed 3 0 to send this into Senate on to City Council for approval, contingents on recreation committee voting. Rotary Park Bid Award. This resolution awards the bid for the Rotary Park, Rotary Park parking lot to GEO Gradle Company in the amount of $292,899.78. Administration is requesting the City Council award the bid to GEO Gradle Company and include a contingency amount in excess of the bid amount to the to be authorized in the field, not to exceed $29,289.97. Ms. Sandretto explained that they had to rebid this project due to a typo. Mr. Thomas explained that the bid includes all of the alternatives. The committee agreed 3 0 to send this on to City Council for approval, contingent on re uh, Recreation Committee voting. A resolution to allow the city to request granite funds, grant funds for the school travel plan. The Safe Routes to School program provides resources, technical assistance, and project funding to encourage and enable students in grades K through 8 to walk or ride the bikes to school. Comprehensive report to SRTS includes both infrastructure and non-infrastructure countermeasures and programs. The City of Perrysburg has an existing school travel plan, STP, that was created on August 1, 2009. Before applying for our SRTS funding, the plan needs to be updated. ODOT recommends this be updated every five years. Mr. Thomas explained that it it's very unlikely the grant would be approved with the plan as it is. The committee agreed 3 0 to send this under City Council for approval. Amendment to Resolution 66 2021 for Fire Station No. 38 improvements. This resolution will amend the agreement originally awarded in Resolution 37 2021, amended, amended by Resolution 66 2021 by pro providing additional funding in the amount of $5,000 for the state for the state number three, the station number three improvement project. Ms. Sandretto explained that the- 338. What is it? I'm sorry, oh. 338. Yeah. Explained that the plans that were on file did not actually match, which is in the building, hence a change order. This is all to benefit the health and safety of our firefighters. The committee agreed 3-0 to send this on to city council for approval. Proposed budget ARPA fund discussion. Ms. Sandretto stated that the committee members received an email from administration with proposed budget amendments as well as proposed expenditures for the ARPA funds. Ms. Sandretto answered budget questions for the committee members to the best of her ability. The committee members wanted param parameters of what you could use ARPA funds for exactly. Some of the ideas the committee members suggested are parked on the west side of the city bike path along the river, bike path along Indiana, downtown ADA, economic development for businesses that are impacted by the pandemic, uh, uh, alley repair, expanded parking at Hook Park, and expanded parking behind the boat club and Riverside Park. Other business, Ms. Materni mentioned the condition alley that runs parallel to Pine Street between 5th and 6th Streets. The alley is rutted badly, and it has continually <coughs> gotten worse. Mr. Weber, Weber complained. Had a citizen complaint in regards to the alley between Cherry and Walnut Street, streets between 6th and 7th, not getting plowed. He was curious about the policy on the or, or, or order of alleyways being plowed, wanting to know if a certain truck is used, or is it a staffing issue? There being no further business, the meeting adjourned at 626, respectfully submitted by myself. Next meeting is Wednesday, February 23rd at 5.30 p.m. Okay. <laughs> Let me catch my breath and then I'll introduce the ordinances. <laughs> Resolution. Um, I have a couple resolutions that I need to introduce. I would like to introduce Resolution 11 2022. I move that the rules be suspended to allow for its reading by number and title only to dispense with the second reading. Second. Roll call. Mr. Fuller? Yes. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Ms. Materni? Yes. Mr. McCarthy? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Van Hagen? Yes. Mr. Weber? Yes. I move that resolution 11 2022 be passed as emergency measure. Second. Discussion? Roll call? I second. No, sorry. Sorry. Resolution 11 2022 resolution authorizing the city of Perrysburg to apply for funding for this. Safe routes to schools project through the Ohio Department of Transportation and declaring an emergency. Move for it, Ed. 
Oh yeah. Move your past Which triggers when I move the passage. Yeah, I move that we pass that the uh, eleven. Um, ten. What? 11, 20, eleven. Eleven. Twenty. Uh, I move that resolution 11 2022 be passed. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Van Husen? Yes. Mr. Weber? Yes. Mr. Fuller? Yes. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Mr. Turney? Yes. Mr. McCarthy? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. I'd like to introduce resolution 12 2022 and move that the rule be suspended to allow it to reading by number and title only and be dispensed with the staff for the reading. Second. Roll call. Mr. Fuller? Yes. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Ms. Materney? Yes. Mr. McCarthy? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Van Hoosen? Yes. Mr. Weber? Yes. Resolution 12, 2022, authorizing an agreement. I'm sorry, amendment to resolution 37, 2021, authorizing the agreement with Lathrop Company, Inc. for the construction portion of the City of Perrysburg Fire Station number 38 improvement project. And an additional amount not to exceed $5,000 I move that resolution 12 2022 be passed as. Second. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Mr. Weber? Yes. Mr. Fuller? Yes. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Ms. Materney? Yes. Mr. McCarthy? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Van Hoosen? Yes. Other business? You have one thing real quick I forgot to mention in the President Council report, so I apologize on this, uh, but uh, there is a public hearing that will be held before the March 1st, 2022 City Council meeting. Uh, the items on the agenda, there's going to be actually three public hearings, one at 615 regarding uh, proposed code amendments um, uh, for gym and fitness facilities, as well as land use and base zoning district tables. At 620, there's going to be another proposed code amendment, again, for land use and base zoning district tables. And at 625, there's a special approval use uh, hearing uh, for Rotary Community Park Master Plan Amendment for the Pickleball Court. Well, what's the date of this again? Uh, it's going to be March 1st, 2022, so just plan to be here before 6.15. I got a couple of things for other business. Sure. Um, I just want to check on the update on when we might be able to live stream. So we have interviewed two companies who do not only the screening but people creation of agendas, minutes, and the documentation of them on the website, plus the live stream. And I think we have a follow-up uh, meeting with one of the providers to the date of selection that may or may not have to come to city council for approval depending on the dollar amount. Mm -hmm. And then we'll move forward. Is there, is there a goal time frame? Um, as soon as possible. Okay. So we can just keep, keep moving that forward along with some other types of projects. Okay. Um, any ETA, I guess uh, that I you don't have an ETA, but I can follow up tomorrow morning with our IT manager at Jackie and send an email off to Okay, and then my other question is going to be uh, I feel like we need to talk about this water tower. Um, we had an email this week with some designs. Um, it's my understanding the administration is recommending, so I, I, I might need a little clarification. Option A, I believe. Is that the recommendation from the administration? The option or what? A was the uh, Disney design that is in the base of the construction project. Okay, so that was what was approved. That is that is the standard that the uh, that any of the contracting companies that were bidding on it put in there was the basic uh, name of that of that community. So okay. That's what's in the base bid for thirty five thousand. So and then that table that we got from Seven Brothers painting that has A, B, C, D. I, I know that. I, can I assume that A means option A? Yes. B means B. C means D. On the picture. Yes, it should follow the. And then, the and then uh, D means option F because then we got another. So did you condense it down to four that you sent to the? What we did is what we are looking for is um, different degrees of. Uh, either artwork or amount of paint or different colors of paint to get a sense of what that additional cost would be. So even though there were other options, they were very similar in terms of complexity. So we didn't give all of them to the contractor for estimated pricing. Okay. We were trying to narrow it down by the, by the amount of paint and the amount of language or, or 
pictorial descriptions that were out there. Okay, and then um, ha has there been any communications with the CVB on, on this project? Uh, I, I have just in general talked to Christine Best. Um, I actually have. I, I, have, I, I can talk about it. The CVB, uh, as you know, the CVB has a new person, Christine Best. CVB is not is directed towards heads and beds, and uh, her opinion is that it doesn't it doesn't do that. Spending money from the CVB, CVB wasn't interested in spending money. I said well, you might want to revisit this at some point in the future, but at this point it wasn't put in the CVB's budget, and she spent a little bit of time looking at it. As I understand it, you know you're driving by. How are you going to make the connection between? spending that value of money and having that then turn into people staying in Perrysburg. It was her uh, opinion that she had better ideas for the money for at least for the first year. And, and that's where we left it. So okay. I did have an extensive discussion with her about it. The councils had conveyed their preference or ideas about it. And as she said from her experience, that, that wasn't, there wasn't a bang for the buck okay. for her purposes. How much did we spend on the revitalization of those cannons? Was that the CVB or was that the city? The actual revitalization of the cannons was done in house by the uh, staff of the service department, along with uh, using an outside vendor who actually, I think, was actually Anderson's staff shop, uh, is the one that actually stripped the cannons and refinished them for us. And then our staff created the actual cannon stands. And then we contracted out for uh, a concrete pad for those heavy cannons. Okay, how much did it cost? It was the CPB that did it, wasn't it? The CPB did not extend money on the cannons. Somebody, I thought somebody donated money to it. Um, the Coleman company or major company actually donated the concrete for the Gold Star Memorial for that base, uh, but not for the cannons. Okay, so how, about how much out of pocket to? For the city, it's probably close to fifteen thousand. Okay. Um, and then the rest was just uh, in house with our own labor. How, how much time do we have to pursue different options? Uh, my understanding is that the time frame to drain the water tower, in order to not just affect the repairs but to also then clean it, is in the spring because of the, the temp fluctuating temperatures. And compensation inside the bowl. Let me let me rephrase. When do if we were to so we're we're looking at a budget amendment right now. Say we were to add something to the budget to accommodate one of these plans or even something more complicated. When would that need to be to Seven Brothers? Uh, for pricing. Yes. For, uh, I would say it took them a week and a half to give us pricing on these options. Uh, so I would say literally the sooner the better because. It, it may be something that they got to, well, first of all, it's something that we'll have to farm out to somebody if it's different than this, get more specifics in terms of uh, quantities of paints because of the size of the letters, the number of codes, the color shoes, um, to get them to refine any of these prices, let alone a new design. So it's, it's going to have to be pretty quick, I would say, by mid March at the very latest. Okay. Um is there any plan by the administration to, to present these different designs to the public? Uh, there has been no discussion. We wanted to first get them in the hands of city council. Yeah, uh, the, the administration's view is that um, residents are always, I mean, if council wants to spend money on that, that would be something council would need to vote on and act. The administration's opinion is that the sign is as agreed and passed by the council, it serves a particular purpose and that uh, residents are complaining to me all the time about expenditure in their budget accounts for water and sewer. And I'm not sure that that's the best bang for the buck. So that was kind of our, why we submitted it at that rate. If council wants to take additional action, happy to do that. Um, happy to do whatever council instructs us to do on that. But we feel pretty comfortable that the sign is designed. So I guess, so the answer is no. I'm trying to. So, is there is there any? Uh, uh, you're not going to present these designs to the public. Well, we can do that. Sure. That's fine. I mean, but I mean, I'm not sure. Like, are we trying to involve the public on, in this decision? Uh, 
we have a budget. We we were designed it on that budget number. If council puts more money in the budget, didn't we? Well, didn't, didn't we? Put, didn't we design it at about like four hundred thousand less the budget? Something like that. I know it was significantly less than what the the budget, original budget had been. But that doesn't again. Is it a budget? You budget. Are you budgeting to spend the most money, or are you budgeting what the spirit is for the appropriate amount of money? We haven't decided. If council suggests we put this out to the public for comment, we, we can do that. I'm not sure if, if council is taking a vote on that. To All I'm see. worried about is if you don't uh, mind, I just want to make a quick comment because I is um, in the public utilities committee. We had asked at least numerous times that we really wanted to have uh, and stay and put in the artwork. So. I think that there was at least some desire with council to be involved with and, and that's as soon as when that happened we asked the committee to get information and we got it to you as soon as we got it. so uh, well we, we had asked for that four months prior till we finally got this just on Friday and I know that we had asked about that back over the summer so what I'll say is my opinion is and this is just my opinion I don't think it's necessarily right or wrong um, I think if we go with option A, me personally, I think it looks terrible. I think it's going to look terrible. Um, or not terrible, it's just not going to look as good as it could have. Um, I think it's mediocre at best. Um, and I think I, I personally want to involve the public because I, I mean, it is a, it's something you see when you're in Perrysburg. Your eyes are drawn to it. Um, the silhouettes have been there for, you know, going on 30 years, it sounds like. Um, and I know I notice them every time I go by or I'm at the soccer fields. I think if we go with option A, I'm, quite frankly, I, I don't necessarily like any of these options. Um, I, I wish we would have spent more time and gotten public input. Um, and now I feel like we're in a position where we might not get that and we may have some ticked off members of the public and I, I don't necessarily want to be the, the scapegoat for that. So, I would, I would like to say a couple things. And I have a question for Bridget. First of all, I never had any trouble with the artwork. I believe it was the other half of the committee that did. Second of all, didn't we already pay for basic paint plan in there? Correct. So we would have to non perform that and then rebid that section out, which could potentially be triple in price triple if not quadruple in price because of the supply chain issues. Well, we might not necessarily bid it out but that contractor we would not perform the one line and then there would be a change order for whatever the addition is. And um, based on the supply chain, could there be an issue getting certain types of paint, possibly, um, as well as there would need to be additional artwork done um, for all of these in order to make sure that the contractor understood the size and width of each letter. Um, that's something that we've got to have this graphic artist do a little bit more work on. So which is, which is fine because we need to do that for the base logo as well. Right. Just to make sure it's proportion correct. But it potentially could cost us a lot more. It could based on whatever we make it a decision on an option that's not in the base bid, depending on what the supply chain issue is of the day. So we would be wait and spending money on something and not in my opinion being fiscally responsible so would we have had the same supply chain issues had we had this discussion about because this is a foreseeable project we knew we were going to be painting the water tower had we considered that it was going to be more than saying more than the city of perrysburg right from the origination of the project the, the price point would be different i would assume rather than rushing it talking about the origination of the project which was months and months and months before we out to bid it, um, and if there's a different piece of artwork, then we would have been locked in with the price in the base bid, even if supply chain issues Right. Uh, but once we, we awarded the bid, any change from that point on, which was sometime in the summer, any supply chain issue could have cropped up prior to the actual change order being uh, completed, and we certainly could have had a price estimate of 10000 four months ago, and it could be 20000 four months later. Right. Until that is locked in mm -hmm. and pricing is quoted by that company and amendments are assigned, signed off on, that price is subject to change. Yeah. And I, I, I agree with your sentiment, Dan. I don't like 
paying an extra amount for a project, but I, I view this one as having a particular public interest uh, where we could have gotten public input on whether we want to spend a little extra on something like that. Um, and that didn't happen. And I, 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 I'm, I'm just worried that we put if we go with option A, uh, we might have some unhappy constituents. You're going to have unhappy constituents no matter what you do. I, and I think, it, I think it gets less if you involve them in the process. I, I would say some people would agree and some people would disagree. Yep. Again, um, I think it's more important and prudent to be fiscally responsible. Yeah, I, I just want to just put a point of clarification as well. When uh, the, this project came up to the Public Utilities Committee, there was no logo, no design that was presented to public utilities, so there isn't anything that um, was presented in order to be approved by the committee. The only, the, what the committee had asked for is an idea of what the logo was going to be or what was going to be on that tower. And I don't think anything was actually ever sent over. And it was more of a conversation with the public utilities that the committee wanted to at least be able to have a conversation on what was going to go on there. I would and that be, never happened. I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, I was told that it would be the one logo. That's what my understanding. It was it was the one that was on that the new logo they went with. They made I thought they made that clear. Maybe I'm wrong. All that was ever said is that it would be Perry's Perry, if I recall correctly, but there was no discussion on what it was going to be. So so I was on that committee as well, and I think all, all of us may have different memories about what yeah, yeah, actually may have actually transpired. But and early on the committee expressed interest in having an input on that. And, and we never really did. And now it may be too late for economic reasons. And that's disappointing because this is a once in a generation statement on the water tower. And, and there's any number of people who know Perrysburg simply because of that water tower. I mean, they, they may not put heads in beds, but they're gonna, it, it's a lasting impression. It's a community that. It, Community view, and so so we may well have missed an opportunity, and that's unfortunate. Um, there are artists that could have created pictorials, and I'll use what we did, what CBD did in Willing Park. I think most of that was just commissioned and, and given as a contribution to the community. It was paid for by CBD because obviously they gave you artists work pretty valuable, pretty tremendous value, because we all do. So we may have missed this opportunity, and that's important. So, I, I don't even know how we can roll with that. <clears throat> well, that sounds confusing. I mean, has the ship sailed <clears throat> for campus go back a few years? No. We have about a month. Is that right? You say we. We would have to make a decision about a month. It'd, it'd be pretty hard to involve the public in a month's time. Possibly Maybe with social media, it can happen. You have to drain the water tower between April and June to get it back into service in that time. And it's not just about the painting. The project is about making repairs to the water tower. That's what started all this. Those, the main, general maintenance of the water tower. The general maintenance of the water and, tower requires it to be sandblasted and after repairs are made to the water. And it's very restrictive weather conditions as to when you can repaint. So that if we get a rainy summer. No, I, I, I understand all that. I, I Again, my, my one big point is, to me, this was an easy way to get community engagement and people caring about what's going up there. Yeah, some people wouldn't have liked the end result no matter what you do. Uh, but it was, I think, as council members, one of the main critiques we were we receive and, and we're seeing it in the land use plan and the heights is a lack of community engagement um, and this was a, a simple missed mark to to engage the community i'd like to still see if there if there's any opportunity to engage the community i think it'd be quite valuable at this point i, I don't look at anything as being a waste i mean we've got a few items here that a couple members have expressed that they don't enjoy um but Somebody has expressed there's a logo there we thought we might um, include. So I don't think it's a wasted opportunity, but I think for public engagement, I think it might warrant a project like this. It's 
council needs to vote and give us some instruction then as to what they what they're willing to pay. I mean, it's one thing to have public art, and and uh, very clearly, if you're going to do a painting like this, if you're going to do more than kind of just this, which also we gave you some additional prices, and there's some disagreement already as to whether that's the proper use of tax dollars. When people are always saying we're spending too much money, maybe a time to just be fiscally responsible is the right thing to do. If somebody wants to say we we're going to authorize, because we, it's one thing to say we could engage somebody, but we. We would need this, it's a big thing. You would need somebody with some expertise and some skills, design and art to do it at the proper scale. Do all that, probably have to do, engage that person. We, we need some, if council wants to identify a dollar amount that could accomplish some of that and we can act on that and put it in the amended budget then, um, that would be, that would be something. It's one thing to say we have different ideas, and we haven't ever had a vote on council saying, "We're we'll spend thirty thousand bucks, get us a good design. Spend fifteen thousand, get us a better design." Spend. We've tried to give you some ranges of costs. More than happy to listen to some direction from council to fund the additional work. Well, we did that how do we know what that amount is? Well, we haven't been able to engage anybody. Um, well, and I, <clears throat> from the discussion, I don't know if there's time to do that now. I mean, is admission critical? We've got to work on this water tower this year, Bridget? Yes. It's also the it's, it's become a public safety issue. Yeah. Okay. See, that's, I think, maybe we are out of time on this. I don't know. <clears throat> to get, I, I mean, I'll look to Bridget to see. I mean, if, if you said to somebody, a uh, consultant, we want to replicate exactly what's up there now, could, could you get a price on that? Yes. Well, but we're not doing that. Yeah. And, and uh, I think. But I can't get a price on an idea that I don't know what the idea is. We have, given the time restraints, this is what I would propose, and I, I apologize, but I think this might be a good resolution. Um, I, I would be willing to make a motion. I'm comfortable with the pricing for the four options um, and amending the budget and putting those four options out to the public because uh, we have them. Um, I would be, me personally, and, and this is something we can vote on in that motion, um, but I'd be okay spending an extra $28,000. Um, and, and I would be okay adding in those, I think there's three other versions of it. Um, I would be okay if that gets out to the public because I think we should still try to engage the public uh, so they feel involved in this decision. Um, so is that what you're looking for, is a, a motion that? Like that? We will just work on a higher up okay. yeah, officer in the near future or we will get that out to the public. And I have a question on this hard and fast. The costs? Yes. Yeah, they're pretty loose. So they could come in higher. They could be 50,000 potentially, hypothetically. You're always making adjustments. Yeah, we can make an adjustment to the budget. I mean, if, if council uses work instead of right, right. I, mean, I, I would be fine with just saying 50, assuming it's going to be under that. I, I don't, that's me. Right. So I would make a motion that we're going to. For all options. So that would be option. Just for clarification, there, I did get a copy of option A through G. More than happy to put all mm -hmm. all those options. Out. And uh, and I'm comfortable with the administration kind of figuring out how to get the votes or how to tally it or. So, so I think I heard someone ask about replicating what is there now. It has to be over. I don't know if I heard someone say. I, I said. I, I was just trying to see cost. How do you get any idea of cost? Could we just get a cost on that? Yes. The administration is not the current design. We have received numerous complaints yes. from people both outside and inside the community about a certain perception that that creates. And, and I don't think that going forward that's a, a, a if it is an image or it is a, if it's a representation of the city, that's not a representation. I think it served its purpose well. Uh, Mayor Connor set that up. I think it very artic it very accurately described the city, the community that it was in the early 1990s. And I think it served its purpose well, but I think it's time to go to the new time. Yeah, no, I, I'm good with that. 
I, I, I will back it up. I, I received some. I was just trying to use that as a right. right. I understand. So I figured that you know what that's going to cost is something that's more artistic than just letters will need somewhat less. And that, I was just trying to get yeah, out, of, out of curiosity, would it be appropriate to try to, um, you know, Perrysburg is the Commodore. Uh, I know we have, I'm not saying that, <laughs> but uh, some silhouette of even the Commodore. I, I think a, 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 a watermark might look really sharp behind that. Yeah. Uh, we can, uh, the silhouettes have a number of issues. From what uh, I've heard from people about the water, about uh, various type of water towers, perception lines. Um, I, I'm very comfortable with the designs that kind of been created. We can have people maybe uh, put it in a budget and see what people want to do at this point. So do you, do you still need a motion out of me or I, I, we, comfortable? We, right now, we need, uh, before we spend any more money or time and effort from the administration, I think if the council wants to okay. say we're like... So I'll make a motion that we're going to allocate uh, $50,000 uh, more uh, to the budget to propose these designs um, for, any additional options. Yeah, for the additional options or any additional, or any additional options um, and hope that it may cost less than that as well. Okay. Not to exceed, right? Not to exceed $50,000. Uh, I'll second. Discussion? Yeah, um, is, that, is that just for the design for clarification? I guess I don't. The additional fifty thousand dollars for the design so the, proposal. The, the design is baseline. That is baseline. Right. Everything else is additional. No design. It's everything that it, what you're asking. I think. Just to, so I'm understanding is, you would like to make sure it says not just the design, but that cost is the additional cost to paint and prepare and do all things that correct. Right. So, yeah. That's including everything. Right. That we have the additional cost for. Right. The, but I think that's the motion you yeah. made. Yep. That's the way I understood it. I guess my only fear goes back to purchasing. Again, are we are we not allowing for enough in there if someone chooses or if we do give this out to the city or to the residents and and such is chosen, uh, paint is extremely expensive right now and it's ever changing. I mm -hmm. I think we're extremely limiting ourselves on the on the dollar amount. But um, and this goes to the mayor's preference would be to not be spending any mm -hmm. If, if council wants to put an additional amount in the budget, that it, you know that's uh, council's. We do have some funds towards that. It would be, it would be utility funds. It would be right. Be water and sewer funds. Other right um, Which we but, did have this water tower budgeted. Correct. Right. So quite a bit higher from the get go, right? Yeah. I don't recall the budget versus the um, actual cost. Actual I want to say it was at least three figures that it was over. Yeah, yeah, I want to say it was a couple hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah. six figures. I understand council's point. My point is, I always am being told that our water utility rates are increasing and they're going up, and we should be doing everything we can to save money. Hi. But uh, I understand the point, and council wants to, the motion is fifty thousand. I, I, I'm comfortable. Gary, then we'll discuss what we need to do. I'm very disappointed that we would spend fifty thousand dollars on painting a water tower with all the other things that well, we could, that are much that we could think of much better uses for. Like fifteen thousand dollars for cannons revitalization. Of cannons. I mean, it's along the same lines. So, uh, That's a big difference money between money. one thousand five hundred and fifty thousand. Fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand. I thought it was. Fifteen thousand. But still, there's a big difference between that. We could maybe hire another, another officer. Or I mean, I'm disappointed that we're changing the design to begin with. So I mean, that's. I mean, I'm 40 years old, and since I can remember, that was that's how I remember Perrysburg. So, I mean, what we spend on it now. I mean, personally speaking, and just reflecting some of the viewpoints of the residents, I, I, I don't agree with this at all. The the design nor. Uh, the process that um, has taken place up to this point. So, there's a pending motion. Any other discussion? So, this might not be fifty thousand in addition to what the administration is already funded. Yeah. So, my intention with that motion is option A. I understand is no additional money to the budget, which includes the city of Perrysburg, uh, written on there with the silhouette of the state of Ohio. Um, the other quotes have variations of that with more saturation to give us a baseline of paint. Um, the top quote we were presented with was option D, uh, 
the quote we got on that, or the estimate, I should say, was 28,000. Uh, so I wanted to go up to 50,000 to account for uh, potential price changes in paint and different designs that may require a little bit extra effort. Uh, that's what I'm basing my motion on. But not limited to the designs that are correct on there. So if something else came out better that we had in time. But it is, it's, we are sending it out to the public that's up to the administration that's exactly what what this motion is designed to do is to help you guys get it out to the public Corey, I, I, I believe this is going to cause a lot of confusion I, and only I only say that because we're, we're we're gonna put these a through G out to the public for you know to choose and then but we're gonna say but if you want something else let us know is that is that what you're saying here because uh, how do you they, how are we gonna get what if we get opinions on these five or six here and you can always put coyotes and roundabouts up there, but and then put uh, and none of the above is one of them too. Well, I don't, I, I don't want to control how it reaches the public. I, I don't know. I'm not yeah. in public utilities. Maybe the public utilities can have a meeting and decide which designs they want to narrow it down to to present the public. I don't know, um, but I would, I would like to try for some community engagement. That's what my motion is designed to do. We can always kick it over to public utilities for discussion, that, but uh, it's just going to add more time. Uh, it, yeah. it is going to add more time, but I, I don't oh, want us to waste too much time either. And um, the more time you add, the more it's going to cost. I'm struggling with the fifty thousand. That just seems too. not to exceed. It's not to exceed. So it, yeah. it's not, it doesn't it mean the forty-nine. Yeah, it could be twenty-eight. I mean, the highest one so far. Is 28 of the ones that you showed us, but um, those are the ones with all the blue paint, probably, right? Mm -hmm. That's a lot of paint. As of January 24th. Yeah. And it's House and Fuller measured paint and is strangely enough mm -hmm. one of those items that is currently uh, fluctuating in the market right now. And this is a special type of paint, so it's probably even more expensive. Well, there's a couple of those options. I. Yeah, you're butt ugly. <laughs> so I'd hate to see you put those out there, but um, <laughs> um, no, please, Roger. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't. Do, do we want to have a vote? Let's have a vote. Uh, um, I just got. Uh, it's called a roll call, and if it doesn't pass, well, all right, well. Motion second, please. I already seconded. Yeah. Thank you. Roll call. I need to read that motion. <laughs> yeah. Please right. read the motion. Because Mark, you make a good point about what are we going to ask the public? And you know, and I, and I, I just think the ship is sailed. Yeah, I think we're out of time. And, 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 and it's disappoints me because this is a signature. Now I'm going to call it this little letter mm -hmm. on that. And, and it's unfortunate, but I, I'm not sure what we have. Any, I don't think we have the time. Would you rather that we make a decision on the the options that were presented? As council and to say we want this option let's move forward with it right now yeah w would that make council more comfortable well we, we, let's let's uh, try and bring this in a little bit well, we have a pending motion uh, for 50,000 for the design so my I guess maybe I need to clarify I, the way I'm picturing I, we're basically giving the administration approval that we're gonna approve 50,000 extra to try to engage the community with potential options or something other than option A in my that uh, how, how you do that I, I guess I'm, I'm viewing it as my motion would allow the administration to move forward with something a bit more expensive to explore other options fifty thousand dollars not to exceed fifty thousand dollars Okay. Um, and, and, and you're saying, I'm sorry, I just. I don't think there's enough time for. Do you, do you want uh, that to move forward with something other than just option A with public input? Uh, that would be my preference, but I'm giving it back to the administration. Okay. To however, we're, we're in a time crunch. Yeah. So I'm not going to try to dictate the process here. I'm saying I'll give you 50000 or in my opinion, I'm okay approving an extra $50,000 so you can explore mm -hmm. uh, potential options other than A because. We're trying to conserve money. Well, the only other option would be is that we, as a council, allocate money and 
pick an option ourselves just to help with the time. Yes, that's that's what I was seeing. I guess we could table that for next meeting. Well, I wouldn't want to table it. If we're, well, I know some people haven't seen everything. Uh, we could. And that's why we could handle the vote on that. All of council has not seen A through G, correct? I have not. I think I only have it because you sent it to me. Right? Yeah. yeah. I'll forward it to everybody. Okay. I'll do it right now. You, did, you only saw the first floor. I think they were just doing it for pricing reasons. They were giving us some yeah. options there. I just forwarded the email. Hopefully everyone received that. So. Okay. Well, if we can make a couple comments about these, the options that are in front of us, or do you want to save that for another time? Well, we, we have a motion on the floor, and we can see if, if council wants to move forward with that motion or if we want to. You want to dispose of it or roll, roll, roll call? Um, let's vote. Into I'll vote. Uh, well, uh, yeah, I think we got to vote at this point. I mean, we might yeah. reintroduce the same thing 10 minutes later, it yeah. sounds like. But. <laughs> Mr. Fuller. Is this roll call? Yes. Vote. Vote? No. Mr. Coleman. No. Ms. Maternity. No. Mr. McCarthy. <laughs> Mr. Smith. I'll just go with the trend now. <laughs> Mr. Van Hoosen? No. Mr. Weber? No. They're just retracting it. We're just going to vote. And <laughs> so do we want to try to, does everyone have an opportunity to look at that now, or do we want to wait two weeks and make that decision in two weeks? Okay. So, I, I, didn't, I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't either. I feel more comfortable putting it out two weeks. I, I would like to add something to this. Um, I'm not against public input, especially in a timely manner. I think we need to take this as a lesson learned and um, look to the future projects and on our committee to make a note of it before it gets this far. Our other four water towers, they all have this Harrisburg in a script. Like, yeah, I don't, and I don't recall any public and, input on any of those. And I'm not right? talking about just this, I, I, you know. They're all relatively visible, except for the one downtown. Yeah. Yeah, the one by the firehouse. I. Right. <laughs> That's my favorite one. It's historic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. So, is there any other business to come before council? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Any opposed. Hearing no opposition. Motion. 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 Motion.